Okay, Q&A. What is the cost of the fine care machine? $27.95. 2795 bucks. Tests are $90 for 10 tests. Comes with everything you need except for needles and syringes that you'll need to draw blood. And you'll need a resell those blood kit collection kits. They're inexpensive. You will need a centrifuge, which you can expect to... The one that we have is a nice portable, you know, it's a nice, small, quiet machine. I think it's like $96 or something on our website, so you'll need that too. Can you do a video on vaginal cytology? I think I've done one, but I will probably do another one. To, it's been a long time. <laughs> Susan Brocksmith. Oh, we love Susan Brocksmith. She always saying nice things about us, and she says this. Another great video. Uh, thanks for all the information. Yes, use products from James and Tammy. The products are great. Shipping faster than Amazon. Are they just a phone call away? Great communication. Well, I don't know if we're faster than Amazon on shipping, but we certainly have options where we can ship things overnight if you need it, because sometimes people get in trouble. They need something right away, and we will always, we will always do whatever we can to get things to you in a rush when it's needed. But you do need to pay for overnight shipping for those situations. And our cutoff time, typically to get anything out, is three o'clock, it's probably too late. So sometimes we've got to build this stuff even to send it out, because a lot of this stuff we manufacture ourselves. But we certainly, I think that the, one of the things that we really do provide is great communication. I think that we provide, I mean, I don't think we could provide better support than what we do. Uh, and if we can, we're gonna work on it, because that's what we're all about. We really are about helping people out and giving support. You know, most of the times you buy a product and, and you have a problem with it, you call up, and you're, you, got to press a hundred buttons to get to somebody who doesn't even know anything about the product and that's not going to be us you're going to get me you're going to get tammy you're going to get cody if if we don't answer the phone we'll answer we'll, we'll call you back if you send us a text message we'll respond to it typically within you know a few minutes to to half an hour um but i mean you know give us a little bit of time you know if this is an emergency that it's an emergency let us know that and we will get on it al Alberto Alvarez says, hello, good afternoon. My dog is on the 58th day of pregnancy and her reverse progesterone was 12.5 nanograms. Do you think she will be ready by Monday or before? I have got lots and lots of videos on this. Um, and in fact, you're looking at uh, predicting puppy birth to C-section using progesterone. I'm not sure if that's one of my videos or not. But here is the, the, the ins and the outs of this. Progesterone levels do not predict how long you've got till whelp. Progesterone levels do one thing and one thing only, tell you that it's safe to take puppies. A progesterone level of three or less, if we're talking about nanograms per milliliter in the USA, or three, three, nine or 10 in England or UK, where we're talking about nanogram, nanograms per, per nanomole, safe to take puppies. If you ask me what a 12 means in terms of when will that puppy be ready, I and nobody else can give you an answer that's meaningful. And if they do, then they don't know what they're talking about. I'll give you an example. Just here a few weeks back, I had a girl that was ready for a C-section. She's really close. Her temperature was starting to drop. It was close to 99. And so we did a reverse progesterone test that evening and she was at a 16. The next morning, uh, her temperature dropped down below uh, 99 did another progesterone test it was 1.6 so it went from a 16 to a 1.6 in 12 hours other dogs might be at a 16 a week before before their, their whelp so the point here is is the the drop rate on progesterone is varied and good and it does not give you a prediction of when you'll be at a three and if somebody says it is you're they're gonna about to step in some muck be careful I have so many people, including vets, and I would say 10% of them, who make bad advice on when to whelp and take puppies early with results that are not good with a loss of some or all of the puppies. Don't take puppies early. There you go, that's the lecturing over with. We're only four minutes into this, we've got time for some more. Uh, okay, someone's saying we've done a good job for him, we helped him out great. We have a question regarding English Bulldogs. His hind legs are dragging behind him, as seen with most of the swimming puppies. His legs are pointed straight out forward, he won't bend knees when trying to walk and he drags his bottom when trying to move. It looks like his hind legs are skis. He is about 
three weeks old is a medium build. Will doing taping his legs help with this issue? Well, what else are you going to do? You're not doing surgery on this dog. It's three weeks old. All you can do is tape puppy's legs up. So, you'd be surprised how well you can get a dog that's got deformed legs to get those legs corrected by taping them up. And certainly at three weeks, you're in the realm where this is a very reasonable thing to do. Will it fix this problem? Probably. Do I guarantee it'll fix this problem? Absolutely not. But there's nothing else that I'm aware of that you can do. So there's all kinds of ways you can be creative about this. Remember, if you've got a dog, dog's legs that are pointing backwards or pointing around the sides, you can't just force the legs forward and make this work. You've got to do it as a slow putting pressure on it with tape. So you bring tape to bring the legs back and every day you tighten things up. And before you know it, you know, within a few days, everything looks fine. And you take the tape off. You're probably gonna have to put the tape on every day anyway because mum and the other puppies are gonna rip it off the puppy anyway. But the whole point here is that's what you can do. I mean, there are more dramatic things that you could do with things like casts and things like that. I've never done that, never needed to do it. I've never had a puppy yet that I couldn't correct by just simply applying tape in an, in an intelligent manner to bring the legs in the right position where they need to be. So the answer is get on with it now. Uh, someone says, wrong, James. The brindle shows up because it's dominance, but fawn is dominant over tri, so that's why it's a full brindle and not a trindle. Well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the whole context of this is. If Vincent Mogi says this, I'm not sure what the whole context is. So, so Vincent, you might just give me an explanation of what we're exactly talking about here, and, uh, and then I'll, I'll address that. So, I certainly can get things wrong, that's for sure. <laughs> Hey guys, what's your thoughts about pink husky Frenchies? By the way, love your videos. Well, I think they're all the different things. Pink and huskies are a bit different, really. Um, uh, so, well, maybe they're not, I'm not sure. I mean, the huskies, from what I've seen, the huskies have this pattern on their head where it looks like a husky. Um, and the pink, is, from what I know so far, is probably that some pink pugs were in the, in the background of these dog genetics that's now been bred out with the, the Frenchie gene. But, uh, I mean, they're expensive dogs. And how this is all going to... The pink pugs didn't work out very well, by the way. I think the pink pugs was not a big hit. So it could be the same on the Frenchies. So I personally would not be investing a crap load of money on this. But that doesn't mean that one shouldn't try breeding to a dog that has the right gene to see what you could do. But exactly where this is going to end up, I just don't know. Because I don't have one. Uh, can you just ultrasound? At f oh, we're we talking about. Is my dog pregnant? I did a relaxing test on uh, on uh, um, Kit. Our you're a hero, and she is pregnant, which is great. Uh, can you just do an ultrasound at four weeks? Yes, absolutely. You can do an ultrasound at about. I mean, three weeks, maybe uh, twenty eight to thirty days. Yeah, pretty reliable on an ultrasound and relaxing test too. Yeah, absolutely. The difference is, is the blood test is dirt cheap, and you can do it at home. You can buy from us. I think five blood relaxing tests for like 79 bucks. Uh, it does require you draw blood, and you do have to spin it down, which you can use a ceiling fan to do that. And you get results in 15 minutes. The other way, you've got to go to the vet, pay for a vet visit, probably a vet consultation. Probably going to be in it for a few hundred bucks and have to take your dog to a place that I don't like taking my dogs to, a place where there's other sick dogs. So, but absolutely. And then, which is more reliable? Well, the ultrasound which will show you whether you've got puppies present, but it's, it's notoriously not reliable about telling you how many puppies. Relaxing test has got nothing to do with how many puppies are in there. It just tells you the dog's pregnant. And you could do a relaxing test or an ultrasound. You see that the dog's pregnant and you don't have any puppies because you reabsorbed them. So none of this is a guarantee. Um, one more here. My dog just had a litter of three old English bulldogs. The little runt causes Mama to get very irritated. When she tries to stimulate her, she struggles doing it because the runt is so small. So I try either to hold her in front of her so she can do it, or I do it myself with a cotton swab. It's only been three days. Let's say I haven't slept much. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Well, yeah. So you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. 
you're just telling us what's going on. And so certainly, you know, this is the thing with raising, especially French Bulldogs. I mean, it can be the first, I mean, lots of you are taking your French Bulldogs away from mamas completely and raising them by hand and only putting them in there with mum every three hours to feed them. I don't do that. I, I don't like that as a solution personally. I think that our heated whelping system is, is a solution for this. But you've got a very small dog and very small dogs typically do take special care. And I mean, I, you know, I had a litter of 10 uh, in a litter of which uh, seven of them were all eight to 11 ounce puppies, which is, you know, the normal to a bigger size puppies. Three of them were five ounces. One of them actually was less than five ounces. Guess what? They were in one of our incubators for the first five days so they could catch up and get to eight ounces before they went back into general, general circulation. So if you've got a puppy that's struggling, you've really only got one choice. You've got to step in there and do what you have to do to let this puppy become a regular puppy along with the rest of its kin. If you don't do that, the puppy doesn't make it. For some of you, that's acceptable. For me, I don't like puppies dying. I'll do whatever I can. If it means I've got to get up you know, three or four times in the night to do it, than I do. But I'd say this, if that's what you've got to do, or if that's what I've got to do, I've got one of our incubators right by the bed, and I've got a bottle of milk in there inside the incubator, so it's being pre-warmed up, so it's ready to go, and I've got a feeding tube, and I can feed three puppies in three or four minutes, literally. That's enough time that I'm just still a little bit groggy, and I can go back to sleep and go get some rest before I get up again another three hours. So, got to do what you got to do. You know, it, you've got two choices. Try and see if that puppy can survive and get some weight on it and get back to the point where mum looks after it or you look after it or you let the puppy die. That last solution sucks. Man, there you go. Bye, boy. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.